I say greetings and good morning to each of you, my father's children. Once again, we are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And we glory and magnify this high and holy night. This week with so much going on in the lives of God's people.
cut on him. We prayed for Sister Betty Williams, who was admitted into the hospital on yesterday morning. And we pray and lift each and every one of them up. And we also want to keep in prayer. And yet we have a praise report that Deacon Hopkins' daughter, uh, who was diagnosed with the COVID-19, is doing well has uh, come back to full health and has returned to work. So we praise God for uh, that praise report. And all of those who say pray for me, we certainly want to lift up in prayer. Know that God is an answer. God is a prayer answering God. Yes. And he can do nothing but fail. Yes. So we give God praise, honor, and glory. And again, we certainly greet you. This blessed Savior of morning as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we will now have our scripture by Deacon Jimmy Henderson, Jr., followed by prayer, by Deacon Howard Prayer. Good morning, family and friends. Today's lesson, I mean, scripture, will be coming from Psalms 1, 1 through 6. Blessed, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not understanding in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water, the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and not whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly shall not so, but are like the shaft which the wind away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of a righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yes. May we have a blessing of the reading, and may we pass for every day.
Then we thank God for this presence. We certainly thank God for your presence. So we will look forward to our Lord worship and praise. And before we hear a word from the Lord, we will go to God and worship in song. Asking God just to be in our midst and thanking God for his presence. The Bible says what two or three are gathered. I will be in your midst. We know that many are at home watching the broadcast, but yet God is still with you. God is still able to keep you, and God is still there, able to carry you. So in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you are this morning. Praise God with us. Praise God for us. And join with us as we give to our God all the thanks, blessings, glory, and dominion that he so richly deserves. As I often say, God is a good God. And God is truly worthy to be praised. So as we have our songs of worship, I ask that you would just release your mind of your hurt and your pain. Release your mind of the things that are not of God. And let the Spirit of God fall fresh on you. As we pray, God will fall fresh on us. That as we come into his presence, God will join in us, join with us in our worship and our praise. And as we join with God and God with us, then we can lift the holy hands and thank God for the great things he has done in our lives. And we will have our songs of worship follow that word from the Lord.
that you're going to make heaven your home. In your eternal presence. In the presence of the Almighty God. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we bless now your holy and righteous name. God, as we come this morning seeking to do your will, as we come seeking for your divine power to deliver your word, God, we first ask that you would forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. God, we pray that you would make us and mold us into what you would have us to be. Let us preach your word not for self-gratification, not for thrill seeking, not to be exalted, but through me you may be seen. That I will give you all the praise, the honor, and glory that you so richly deserved. God, for I am nothing but as a fleeting piece of grass that grows and withers. Yet, God, here I am standing beneath your throne of grace and mercy, asking, O oh God, for your divine power. Pray, God, that you would open up the avenues of our hearts, the avenues of our minds, and Pour into us what thus saith the Lord, that you would grant us an experience in worship, an experience in praise, that we, O oh God, may be in your presence this day and be encouraged that no matter the circumstances in our lives, that we ought to always be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, there are many sick among us, but we know you are the great physician. God, there is many struggling, but we know that you can calm the storm out on the raging sea. God, there are many who are facing financial difficulties, but we know, God, that you can open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that they have not room enough to receive. We know, God, that you give sight to the blind, hearing to the dumb, power to the lame, and those, O oh God, who struggle from day to day. We know through your great and dynamic power that you have the power to change lives, that you have the power to change situations, that in your name every tongue should confess and every heart believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. God, we pray for those who do not know you in the free pardon of their sins. God, we pray for those who have not chosen to take Jesus as their Savior. God, we pray for those who deny your power to change and to renew, to transform and to invigorate. We pray, God, that you will lift up bow down heads and men troubled hearts. God, and we pray that you would continue to do a good work in us, not that we with glory in ourselves, but in all things honor you. God, for you are our all in all. And it is in you that we should trust and never doubt. God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we pray, oh God, that we continue to lift up our bloodstained banners that we will deny ourselves daily and pick up our cross and follow after you. 
And for those things, God, that were in us and that control us, we pray that you would remove from us that our lives may give you glory. We thank you, O oh Father God, in the blessed and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who paid it all and made it possible for such a wretch like me to come in the presence of such a holy God. God, we love you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we need you. And most of all, God, we want you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 As we lift up a word from the Lord this morning, we will lift up that word from Romans chapter number 12, verses 1 through 3. And then we will skip down to verses 9 through 21. Romans chapter number 3. Excuse me, chapter number 12. Verses 1 through 3. And then skip down to verses 9 through 21. And that word reads, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God, what God's will is. It's good and pleasing and perfect. Will. Then now to verse number nine. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor. Serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who per persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Yes, sir. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For as it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of this most holy and sanctified word. Amen. This morning as we lift up a word from the Lord, our topic would be God knows your stench. God knows your stench. Okay. The fragrance of our praise. Right. God knows your stench. The fragrance of our praise. This morning, as we talk from this topic, God knows your stench, the fragrance of our praise. The fragrance of our praise and worship should outweigh the stench of our sins. 
to those who have been redeemed, purchased, and brought by the blood of the risen Savior. Our fragrance should be a sweet-smelling aroma to the very nostrils of God. But it is far too many of us this morning whose fragrance is but a cheap knockoff. We are bottled and presented correctly, but when we release the contents, it is found to be a fraud. When we take the first whip of our fragrance, that fragrance appeal appears to be the real thing. But the longer we wear that fragrance, the less it smells like the real thing. All right. All right. Oftentimes, it begins to put off a foul and unpleasant odor. The longer we keep the unreal fragrance in our lives, the longer our stench or the louder our stench becomes. Oftentimes, when we do not live in the ways of the Lord, when we fail to adhere to the words of God, when we do not let God's light, lead, word lead us and guide us, our fragrance of prayer becomes our stench to God. Too many of God's people live from day to day, not truly trusting in the true and the living God. Too many of us from day to day do not do the words uh, that we just read in your presence. We don't live lives that are acceptable and pleasant, are pleasing in the eyes of God. We do not look out for one another, but we walk around with the unpleasant smile of frowns on our faces. We give others a piece of our minds instead of giving God our praise. Too many times we fly off the handle, not understanding that we are harming and hurting one another. But what we give to God is some cheap knockoff. We come to God all made up, dressed up, fixed up, but God knows our hearts. Oftentimes as we deal with people, uh, or we present it with knockoffs in our lives, when we let those in our lives that do not serve the true and the living God, when we let those who try to hinder our worship and our praise become a part of our lives, sometimes they present that which is right, but it is wrong. They give you a pleasant smell by smiling in your face. They tell you you look fine and you are just all right. But soon as the tides turn, they no longer present themselves as a fragrance of fresh-smelling pleasantries. But you find them to be somebody that will tear you down. Right. Oftentimes, those who deal in cheap knockoffs are often pushy and controversial. They try their hardest to ensure you that you're dealing with the wrong, with the royal thing. If you hang around Satan, I need to warn us too long. If we hang around Satan too long, Satan will present you something that smells sweet, but yet it was sour in your soul. Satan will give you a fragrance of beautiful pleasantries of the flowers blooming in your life. But soon as he removes his hands, you will find that the storms in your life will begin to rage. Satan will present to you a fragrance that smells good, but yet have you clinging on to life. Satan will present you something in your life that will tell you you can walk away from God and everything will be all right. You see, Satan and his approach starts out like those who deal in fake fragrances. They start out with a subtle approach. They tell you that what they have is the real thing. And as soon as you begin to question what they offer you, as soon as you begin to say something is not right, they begin, they begin to be pushy and controversial. They want you to, to believe that what you are having in your presence is the real thing. Have Satan never done you like that in your life? Something that you thought was gold began to glitter, and as soon as you began to pick it up, you found that it was not the real thing. Yeah. Too many of us, of God's children, need to be reminded that though Satan was thought out with a subtle approach, he will begin to turn the tides on you. He will begin to make your life miserable. He will begin to let your 
sweet smelling fragrance become the stench of your life. You see, some of us, instead of trusting God, believe and trust in one another. Though God requires us to love one another, though God requires us to be our brother's helper, though God requires us to lift up one another in prayer. As soon as somebody tells us that we're wrong, then we want to turn around and be Satan in their lives. We want to tell them that you ain't what you are and run them down, but God says, guess what? I will lift you up. You see, this morning, we need to be reminded that we cannot serve two masters. Either we will love one and hate the other, or we will serve one and leave the other behind. Satan has us, has far too many of God's children believing that what you are presenting to God is good enough. But God, this morning I need to tell you, is a jealous God. And God does not intend for you to share anything that belongs to him with anyone else. God does not want your half-hearted worship nor your faith praise. You see, but our fragrance of praise must overrun or overpower the stench of our sins. Yeah. You see, who we were on yesterday, God has changed us. What we did on yesterday, God has turned it around. You see, so many of us live in our past that we can't let God make us into a bright future. Yeah. You see, we must understand this morning that we are sinners saved by grace. And that since we are sinners saved by grace, God does not want your faith praise or your leftovers. You know that you have been redeemed, yet you live like your yesterday instead of your tomorrow. Right. Too many of us pray. I know prayer works, but our prayers are futile. Too many of us pray with weak substance, giving God a fake fragrance. We tell God that we want to trust him, but as soon as the storms rage in our lives, we begin to question God and ask God why. Instead of lifting up holy hands, giving God praise, honor, and glory in our storms, we begin to doubt the very power of God that worketh in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Too many of us, Wonder why our prayers go unanswered. Because the fragrance that you're sending up to God is unacceptable in the presence of God. Words God, to so many of us, God's word can be a guiding star in our lives because we spend too much time focused and worried about what's going on in our lives. We believe that coming and saying that I believe is enough. We believe that coming to God half-hearted and half-stepping is all God requires. We don't understand that God requires us to walk in the newness of our minds. God has transformed our minds to the old lowly way we used to think, the old way we used to talk, and the old way that we used to walk. Too many of us have asked God to create in us clean hearts. We have asked God to renew in us right spirits. Yet we deny the very power of God that works in our lives. When we do this, we find ourselves that our, the worship that we render becomes foul and disgusting to God. So many of us who are born again believers, so many of us who have professed Christ to be our Savior, so many of us who understand that Christ died for our sins, that we have been washed and renewed in the power of the blood. We give God what God does not want. Instead of walking in our newness, instead of being trained, having our minds transformed and asking God to truly create in us clean hearts, we, don't, we deny the power of God that works in our lives. You see, some of our praise truly does burn the very nostrils of God. Right. You still walk like you used to walk. You still talk the way you used to talk. Right. You still treat people like you used to pe treat people. You're still arrogant, high-minded, stuck up, and thinking that you're all that when God says, in essence, we are nothing. Right. I'm here to tell us this morning that God does not need our worship nor does God need our praise. But those who have been born again and raised in the newness of life, God wants you to understand that he does want your worship, and God will accept your worship if your worship is true and holy. God will accept your worship if it's not half-hearted or half-stepping. You see, the Bible says that those who 
worship gods, must worship God in spirit and in truth. God doesn't want our half of worship or our freak fake praise, but God wants to take your sins and turn them into your praise. Yeah. God wants to take your brokenness and turn it into your worship. God wants to take your hurt and turn it into your glory. You see, God says he promised if you are faithful over a few things, he will make you ruler over many things. Yeah. But too many of God's people can't handle the small things in their lives. How should we expect God to bless us with great things. Too many of us complain that we complain about where we are instead of letting God take us to where God wants us. Yeah. We must understand that the fragrance of our praise, instead of being a stench to God, must become a glorious work in our hearts and in our minds. Too many of us un understand that God requires our total praise, yet we want to have step and don't trust God. You see, if we truly love God this morning, if God has truly been good to you, then the fragrance of your praise ought to please God. Yeah. It ought to be desired by God, and your fragrance of your praise ought to exalt the very name of God. 